Humana. These people bring merch, they bring their books, but Amy has actually brought a collection of merch, um, t-shirts, DVDs, um, frames from her uh, animation. So afterward, um, have the opportunity to uh, purchase some of her work. But before we start, um, I just want to let you know about some of the events that are, that are still coming up for, um, for CAS. Um, on the week of November um, 13th, we're going to have a lot of activity. Um, Samus is going to be here. She's a, a rapper and um, an academic. And um, she's going to be giving a talk in um, the Presby Theater at 4.30 on November 13th. And then there'll be a performance at the Ace Hotel on Friday of that week. And we're going to have um, buses running back and forth um, from here to the Ace Hotel um, for students who need to do that. Also that week, um, Jared Tate, who's a, a Chickasaw composer, he's going to give a public talk in the Alumni Concert Hall downstairs. Um, and then on, uh, that's on the 16th and then on Saturday the 17th. So we have this bit so that you could, um, if you wanted to, you could see Jared ta Tate talk. Um, at 6.30 and then catch a bus to the Ace Hotel for the Samus performance. Doors open at 7.30, but um, uh, uh, the performance starts at 8. And then at, on Saturday uh, at 7.30, um, um, I'm sorry, at 6.30 on November 17th, um, Jared Tate is going to give a pre-performance talk and then um, um, there's going to be a concert by the Contemporary Ensemble um, called Sonic uh, Environmentalism that will start at 7.30. <coughs> So I'm happy to welcome um, Amy Lockhart. Uh, she's currently an assistant professor at DePaul University. And she works across a range of mediums, including zines, sculptures, paintings, drawings, and animation. Um, her work exudes imperfection. It is unpredictable, heartfelt, funny, and disturbing. Uh, many of her works feature an array of distorted cartoon characters whose misshapen bodies limp, bend, and bulge often while smoking, licking, drooling, or crying. Um, also recurring in her work are dismem uh, disembodied facial features, hands, limbs, as well as various joyfully rendered muscly women uh, frequently missing their arms. Um, these characters drive her work, but there is much um, about pleasure, and, and there is as much pleasure and interest to be taken in the way they are drawn, animated, or constructed as there, uh, as there is in what they do. Um, her films communicate on a direct gut level and resist analysis or dissection. Um, this work has been screened internationally, including the uh, British Film Institute, the Whitney Museum, the Anthology Film Archives, Ann Arbor Film Festival, and the Hiroshima International Film Festival. She's received fellowships from the National Film Board of Canada and the Canada Council. Um, and please help me welcome Amy Lockhart. Hi. Hi, hello. Um, thanks for coming. Um, so I'm going to show you some images, talk a bit about my practice, and then I will show you some films. Um, so I've been drawing pictures of ladies smoking cigarettes since I was seven years old. So this is a sketchbook, maybe eight, that I found, uh, which I thought was really funny because it's really similar to um, how I compose images and the images I still draw to this day. Um, I started out uh, I don't know what, going to art school, uh, all that stuff, and then got involved in um, zine making sort of thing. Uh, people were making comics and zines, and uh, at the time it was the 90s, the internet wasn't really big yet. Um, so making books, uh, small press books, uh, was a really great way to disseminate my work, disseminate my work, and sort of create a community and co uh, connections with people, um, different levels, um, that sort of thing, and sort of create communities of my own, um, and have uh, collect my work and have it sort of sent out uh, into the public. And um, there was a group of people making uh, these great books. Uh, they were less about um, the sensibility of a book being full of words that make sense and uh, give you information and more about uh, just a collection of um, images and absurdist uh, language and uh, uh, verbal language, visual language created through repetition. Uh, so I was really interested in that idea of being able to just mess with the sensibility of what uh, a book is and uh, sort of bend it to my, uh, I, my ideas. 
Um, a lot of my work uh, is, I joke, I'm creating a media empire, but a lot of it is using uh, mass media sort of materials um, and using those materials and those structures and creating my own work. So rather ha than having all those voices sort of pushed onto me and ideas pushed onto me, I can use the same structures and sort of push back and represent my idiosyncratic point of view sort of thing. Um, so since these are some early books I made, Dirty Dishes, a uh, collection of drawings. Uh, this is Nogadog, oh, this was the cover of Nogadog, N-O-G-A-D-O-D, -D, which is a really great collection of psychedelic Canadian, I think there might be some American drawers, it's really great. Um, and yeah, so these are some of the books, so I would send them out in the mail, I would go to zine fairs, um, I would trade them with people. Uh, that sort of thing. And I would just make them on a photocopier. It was even before I was using Photoshop so much, so it would be like mixing color copies with black and white copies, going to Kinko's, all of that great olden days kind of stuff. Um, this is a more recent book. Um, I started uh, printing them professionally and just playing and creating series of images and printing them as books. This is a pipe drawing, so it's this sort of uh, confused gender dude and lady uh, drawings uh, smoking a pipe and it was just this uh, great character I loved um, and sort of just drawing them in these sort of sexualized but also um, disgruntled sort of face here going on um, drawings and then uh, I just like this idea of just sort of complicating the consumption of female imagery that sort of thing so playing with um, making it a little bit uncomfortable to look at, not so easy to understand and consume. Um, playing with gags, like taking out the arm. I like, I am always cracking jokes. Uh, so I just like to, if I don't need to draw on the arm, I don't, or just sort of remove it so you can see a really nice torso shape uh, type thing. And um, what else? Oh yeah, with a lot of my work, I like to sort of sit between cute and creepy. Um, so it's, it's kind of try to hit that area where you have to be uncomfortable uh, comfortable with being uncomfortable. So if it's too creepy, I feel like it's too easy to understand. Uh, if it's too cute, it's too easy to understand and consume. And I just kind of try to hit, um, just that, encourage people to be comfortable with being uncomfortable sort of thing. Um, here's uh, more recent stuff where I was um, using pencil drawings, creating pencil drawings, and I made a book out of it too. Uh, I was experimenting with a lot of uh, different ways to frame frame an image and also just a uh, pencil drawing rather than like a thick, aggress aggressive, like strong graphic line. I was uh, trying to look at like the, the vulnerability and the delicateness of the pencil line uh, as sort of strength, like vulnerability as strength and sort of try to uh, use things that I normally associated weakness and softness and femininity femininity, and sort of like try to bring those into my practice sort of thing. Uh, yeah, it's great hair right here. Um, so yeah, again, so it's just like doing the torso thing and just playing again with just trying to mess with uh, framing, like creating weird um, framing because I work a lot with film. So just uh, using the same size piece of paper and just drawing different compositions to uh, mess with like the shots I'm used to seeing. Um, this is Dizzler, so this is the cover of a comic I did for uh, Gansfeld, Japanada. It was this uh, book uh, put out by Picture Box, now defunct. Uh, so it's the cover of a comic I did based on the Dazzler. Uh, so it's sort of a parody of an uh, action hero comic. Um, and this was uh, the cover of it. The inside with black and white drawings more simple, but it's like a traditional sort of Marvel or old school type comic where the cover is more realistic sort of thing. Uh, and I'm currently working on a feature, I've been working on it forever, but I'm seriously getting it done soon, uh, uh, based on the story of the Dizzler sort of thing. Who's, um, she's a pop star uh, who just got out of rehab uh, for killing a bunch of people at a concert and is trying to reclaim her name, but if someone is masquerading as her, so story of redemption. Um, this is Miss Edmonton Teenberger, 1983. That's a drag character that uh, my friend Matthew created. Uh, and then we started making these videos together. Uh, that's his sister Kylie. So I'm going to show you that video in a second. And this is um, a VHS cover. So before DVDs. 
So I would paint, I uh, painted my own VHS cover, uh, fo went to the photocopier, photocopied it from this at 60% reduction probably, uh, and then cut it out and made them myself and sold them or uh, traded them to the mail sort of thing. Um, yeah, and I'm very much into, I like accessible things. That was one thing that really drew, drew me to zines and to making animation uh, was that it was just very accessible and people could just look at it and react and I just l like using those uh, modes of dissemination and creation. Stuff, stuff that uses um, language from mass media so it's accessible to a lot of people and also uses those tools to share it. Um, uh, this is uh, my, a drawing but also uh, there's a t-shirt for sale with this on it. I had a great idea. I thought these would be hot sellers. Very hard to sell. I don't know why. But, um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I have a creepy inclination. Um, I've also done lots of work at community centers. So this is a this is a great, amazing community center in Winnipeg, Manitoba, right above Minneapolis, um, Art City. And so I came in there to do a haunted house residency for a month uh, and created a sort of a maze in there with the different participants uh, from around the neighborhood. And then this was the final haunted house. This one's great. Pop out of the table and scare people. Um, so it's a really amazing experience, and then here's all the people. So it's a lot of the kids making this stuff, and then the parents coming and the friends coming to see it. Um, it was an amazing experience. I went there thinking, um, oh my god, I have to teach these kids so much. I have to do all this stuff. I have to achieve these things and end goal and all this stuff. And then while working with the kids, I realized it was a lot more about moments and creating these moments with them. Um, where they um, could direct the project or we could share in creating something together. And uh, yeah, it just made me experience, uh, really appreciate moments mo and see my life more as like a series of memorable moments to cherish rather than like end goals sort of thing. Um, and here's the lineup, it's a huge lineup uh, going through. Um, and then I started making animation on 16 millimeter film uh, Helen Hill uh, was my uh, animation instructor, uh, and she, uh, she kind of changed my life. Um, she just taught me uh, so much about just life and animation and just uh, the strength and vulnerability and uh, positivity and just being um, mischievous and causing trouble and like, uh, not giving a fuck in a positive way, sort of thing, does not have a better way to say it. But, uh, so this is a recreation of an Oxbury stance. This is what I started out on. Um, so the film camera would be here, uh, table sh down shooter, I think that you call them now. Uh, so the lens is pointing down. This is the tabletop, and I, move, I moved cutouts around. This was the collagist I was working on. So this was an installation in a window, and you look through here, through this viewer, and you see the uh, animation that's in progress sort of thing, and then you can see the stuff that it's filming. I was really into recreating things in paper and just like the idea of um, using paper and cardboard to create things, just um, the idea of the ridiculousness of it a bit in my bus. We'll go back here. Oops. So these ones, so I'll create sculptures. Um, so sort of these busts that are like supposed to be these um, solid sculptures to commemorate things, but I would make them out of paper and plastic, and I love the idea of just how easily they could just melt and fall apart. It made me just think of how we have all these um, social constructions that sort of have so much sway over us and, and our perceived reality, but they're just like cardboard and can be easily dissolved sort of thing. Cardboard city. Uh, back here. Sorry, I'm moving around. Oh yeah, so Osbury. Uh, I also do lots of painting. Um, I paint in acrylic. Because uh, it's very accessible and cheap. Uh, a lot of the aesthetics I use are uh, print based, so I know I'm, I'm making these to put, usually collect in a book. So I'll think about using flat colors and how the image is going to look on the page, but also use that um, poppy colors and that sort of thing from, ba uh, from print based media to uh, help inform my work, sort of thing. Um, and then um, I like to combine sort of the abstraction of cartooning. Like the idea of a, of a thought bubble is this strange shape with little circular things on there, but we understand that as a thought bubble. Uh, eyeball circles with dot in the, dots in them. All these things are abstractions, but we understand them as uh, happy faces and all that. 
So I like to combine sort of um, cartoon abstraction with uh, realism sort of thing. Um, yeah, again, to just mix that, that idea of what we see, our physical experience of something, and, and then our also how social constructions lie on top of that abstraction, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, and then here's some great paintings, some more paintings, no arms, great torso. Um, a lot of these characters I'll end up using in comics and animations. It's almost like creating like a, a cast that I get to reuse. And uh, so I'll paint paintings of them, do drawings, um, look at drawings I've done previously to, to use as inspiration for new videos and that sort of thing. Some more creepy paintings. Oh yeah, here you see a little cartoon eyeball happening. Uh, this was a cover for uh, Dirty Dishes, a book uh, that John Quarterly published. Uh, and this is a little gag. This move now. This uh, the hand punching the wall is a gag I, I stole from another sort of weirdo comic, but I just like strange gags like that. Lady smoking, still painting them. Um, uh, portrait of a friend. Portrait of another friend. Um, oh yeah, and a, a lot of these I like to sort of create almost like <coughs> fragment, like stills from a film where you're trying to figure out what's happening, like sort of implied narrative and about more about the dynamics uh, involved and allow the viewer to project their meaning on it, that sort of thing. This is Debbie from the Dizzler. Some more people. Uh, portrait kind of of my mother, but um, Sorry, some more paintings. So I'm going through these fast. I didn't realize that's a piece of Here's some earlier work uh, where it's more drawing and a bit rougher. Um, yeah, and then I would just paint on paper, gesso it, and uh, combine it. Uh, here's a painting I did of my aunt, of, for my aunt of her dogs. Uh, my backup career is an animal painter. Uh, pet painter, just thought I'd stick that in there for fun. Um, here's another a project I did at Art City that was the 20th anniversary parade or something like that, but we, um, they have a parade every year, so we, I went in there, I don't know why this one doesn't work, uh, we made giant paper mache sculptures and we learned them from uh, this technique from a woman from Philadelphia who did, makes giant uh, protest sculptures sort of thing, and it's great. You make your base out of uh, cardboard, staple your cardboard together to get the basic shape, and then you use uh, paper from gar uh, grocery bags, that thick paper, and then mix it with a mixture of cornstarch, and it is amazing. It dries very fast and is very strong. So we made these with the participants, and then here's the shots. And what I loved about this parade was that everyone was in it pretty much. There was like one person sitting on the on the road watching it and there was one house party, midday house party that we walked by. But otherwise it was just like every everyone was a participant, which was kind of amazing. Uh, again, this is a sculpture, the uh, paper mache, and then also these eyes here. Um, it's a ha half an orb, a clear orb, uh, and then on the back of it I painted an eyeball. And uh, it created this effect that wherever you are in the room and you look, the eye sort of looks at you, sort of follows you. So it's animated in a sense, sort of thing. So this is a self-portrait as a lady. A lot of my portraits of ladies I call ladies. So self-portrait as a lady, uh, looking creepy and gross and fabulous. Uh, this is a sculpture of Jessica, who is a character I'll show in an animation coming up. Uh, so I had a show with her in it, uh, yeah, so it's a bust. And then here are her boots, which are integral, an integral part of the animation. So I uh, made a sculpture of them. Uh, here's a still life I did, again working, I don't work so much with paper anymore, uh, but I did then, so I um, often I'll cut off arms, that sort of thing, I'll have repeated motifs like uh, socks and uh, high heel shoes, painted nails, that sort of thing. Um, and then I created this a still life where it's so create, I would have images of like these paintings and then a still life with the disembodied limbs sort of thing. Uh, this is a red shoe of human rights. So this is uh, a sculpture I did uh, in honor of the Pollock and Pollock show, which was on public access television in Winnipeg 
back in the early 90s. Um, Daniel Barrow did a, an amazing curated tape called Babysitter's Club, I think it was called. If you can still get it, it's got all these great excerpts from uh, Winnipeg Public Access Television. There was the Pollock and Pollocks, and they were a brother and sister team, and they would have these, ama these amazing sort of kind of variety show. Everyone would be on there, and it was just like this really positive, um, sort of let your freak flag fly atmosphere, kindness, not coolness sort of thing. Um, and then at one point, um, it's like Ronnie and Natalie. Natalie comes up to the screen. She's, she's voluptuous. She's got this great glittery top on, the skirt. She's looking great. Her hair is all big. And she's wearing these red high heel shoes. And she's dancing around. And then she takes off her red high heel shoe. And she goes up to the counter. And she's like, this is the red high heel shoe of human rights. And there was something that like struck me, that how beautiful it was, just that, um, just to see such a dirty, messy, uncontained idea of human rights, sort of thing, like um, just everyone sort of doing their thing and accept, being accepting and creating this great space. Um, and they're total amazing characters. You should look up, and you can see the videos on YouTube, I think, still. So I made this uh, shoe in commemoration. Some more props I've done. Uh, lots of my props and costumes are handmade. Uh, this was with tape and paint sort of thing. So this was an older film based on a fur trader back in the early days of the colony I come from. Um, this uh, is one of my paper puppets, uh, Dizzler. This is the Dizzler character, but I'm just showing you how I construct them. So I started out making very much like handmade um, dolls, paper puppets and cutouts that I animated with, and uh, I just used string and tape. So I taped the string to the back of the front piece and then just with a needle pierced the back piece and tape it back. Um, yeah, so this is usually what I started out uh, working on. And then this is Jessica, a more recent one. Uh, so I keep I kept trying to like advance that uh, and make a million unnecessary cutouts. Uh, and this one is just too many cutouts, so many cutouts. I, I created them in different sizes so I could give the illusion of um, advancing and receding in space and rotated them so the head could rotate. I went uh, a little obsessive and maniacal. Um, and then some stills from Dizzler uh, that I was working out. So I, I was just trying to have sort of implied depth and actual depth sort of happening. So I'm going to go through. And then these are... Uh, stills from a really early animation that I, oh yeah, so first one I'm going to show, Silver Lining. Uh, at the time it was, what, 98 or something, dollar stores were really getting really big, and I was like, what? And I was sort of somewhat obsessed with them, like, this is the height of civilization, just buying crap, like, you know, so I bought a lot of crap. Uh, so I used mostly, like, uh, material from that. This is um, a notepad, so I just animated on it, and that's Wonder Woman. Uh, this was from Devil Lives in Hollywood, which uh, you can see online. Um, and I was working at a stationery store at the time, so I had access to a photocopier. And so I did the entire piece on 8.5 by 11 paper with stamps and photocopies and that sort of thing. Um, I'll usually, like, what do I say, high, have high ambition and low overhead. So I'll try to keep my uh, overhead, my cost as low as possible and sort of embrace limitations and the materials I have at hand and then try to make crazy stuff with it. Um, okay. So now I'm going to show you some more recent video stuff. I mean, I'm going to start with the first animation I ever made. So this is <laughs> sorry. So this is uh, animation from 1998. I think it's one of the first ones. Yeah, it's right. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. 
Okay, so that was made of cutouts mostly. Uh, yeah, an on 16 millimeter film. Um, this is one of the Miss Edmonton Team Burger. Uh, the first Miss Edmonton, oh, never mind, the second Miss Edmonton Team Burger I did, but the first in the actual storyline. Um, yeah, I'll just play it and we'll talk about it after. around you 
I'm casting my spells all around you. The seventeen burger and the unicorn of joy forces. The almighty union. They will battle against the princesses of evil. 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 No, you never. Yeah, fuck you, you goose. Teamburger, that was a character he created. It was a friend who was having an art opening, so he came up with this character. He's from Edmonton, which is a um, place in Alberta. Uh, so he was sort of uh, just making fun of where he was from and that sort of thing with the way he's dressed and, and all of that. And then we ended up making, started to make videos together. Um, so about his character, and we would sort of write them together. Uh, this one, the, it was uh, for a commission base, and the theme was drugs. So we decided to make like a parody of an after school special sort of thing. And so I'd be sort of planning out the thing and then he would say, oh, I think I need a love interest. And I was like, ooh, okay. And so it sort of developed from that. And there was never any real script. We would just have sort of story beats. Like, okay, in this shot, this has to happen. And then people would improvise. And I was usually just getting friends to help me with it. And then I would find people who would give me great ideas for characters like um, John, Jonathan Debara or Dirty Debbie, as we called him, the wizard. Um, he would do these Rush impersonations. It's like this band from Canada in the 80s, and uh, like prog rock, like someone talking like, the elves are in the forest. Anyway, so he would do uh, impressions of it, and I was like, oh my god, you're my wizard. So I sort of uh, used a lot of friends to help me, and sort of found uh, goofballs that would be good actors within people I knew. Um, oh yeah, and that was shot in uh, this guy Scott Evans, this artist, in his backyard. He was renting a house, and he made uh, gr amazing stuff with junk, and made this whole gazebo with shag carpeting as tiles, and uh, just stuff like that. Um, okay, so I will show you the next one. So this is a more recent one, uh, this year. This is an online spring. We're gonna make baby! What, what, where are you going, Bambi? Get away from me! No, ew, no, too much. Never enough. Grandma <laughs> wants Steve. I have mold web. So we for Bandit's baskets. He's a hardest. He's your basket we can teach your mom. Stop spying on us and all. Dad needs to know. We just met. Ah, shots fired. Shots fired. You saved my life. Let's go. Woohoo! We can win the game. You don't look like your profile picture. You don't look like your profile picture. Steve! Celery. I failed you, haven't I? It's not you, Nats. It's the one with celery. I'll take that. Yeah, so that is that. So that was um, a 
commission by Adult Swim. They uh, they commissioned two one minute shorts for me. Um, they were trying to get like more diverse voices, but then ended up later rejecting it because it wasn't their vibe. But I'm still gonna continue my journey to sort of try to infiltrate. I feel like I kind of live between this world of like art, uh, film festival films, and sort of indie stuff, uh, mass media stuff, and. Um, sit somewhere in the middle of that, but one goal is to try to get something on TV that shouldn't be there, that makes people like, why is this here? So, uh, first couple of attempts, but I'm going to keep going with it. Uh, and then that one, uh, I was using, I'm really into watching The Real Housewives and horrible reality television, so I use a lot of those aesthetics, like the camera moves and, and um, little sentences that if you put together kind of make sense sort of thing. Uh, to uh, create these shorts. Oh, and then now when uh, I've also started working now uh, with paper, I'll create sort of like the idea of a paper puppet, like the hinged puppet, but I'll bring those um, pieces into, oops, sorry, I'll bring that into uh, After Effects or create them in After Effects and then use the Do It puppet pin tool, the puppet pin tool, it's this Do It thing. So sort of experimenting with that. Uh, and it was a great excuse to sort of learn it, even though it might not have been the smartest thing to do. Just to learn a new technique uh, while I was creating something, but uh, it, was, it was fun. Um, yeah, okay. Um, this is an 8 bit one, Amiga.
do you want to say a prayer? Yeah. So that's the second one. And so with these animations, I got really into it. And uh, different, uh, different sort of uh, species, lifestyle choices, duck consciousness sort of thing, uh, and then trying to uh, make skits around it. Uh, and then one thing that sort of tied this up was just a little information thing at the end. So this one, in a crazy, weird way, was about uh, brood parasitism, which is some ducks will lay their eggs in other. Um, ducks nests so that the other ducks take care of them. It's a way to increase their population so if their nests get eggs get eaten, there's still some out there. But it's a great sort of analogy and metaphor for just uh, having kids and making someone else take care of them sort of thing. So I just sort of used those like science facts and built like personalities and characters around them. Um, let's see what we got now. Okay, Jessica, this is the one I showed you the, the art from. Uh,
guess we should go to the doctor. It's not red. I mean, there's some swelling, discoloration. But it doesn't look that bad. You don't need to go to the doctor. <laughs> Doctors ask too many questions, and no one wants to tell a doctor they dropped the baby. the baby and then I woke up and was like completely horrified that I had thought that um, so then I made an animation about it um, and then this animation it was uh, sort of like a parody of a sitcom or trying to play with that structure so uh, I was thinking of the the formula of, of sitcoms uh, I remember watching them and just the comfort of them you would know like at certain times things would happen and just like how much it's sort of the timing is sort of played out and it becomes this formula you you understand and everything sort of makes sense so I was trying to use that um, sort of consistency but instead of a, a shortening the time or working to a certain formula I lengthened all the time uh, so it's like this strange drawn out time becomes uh, through repetition becomes what's normal um, and then just playing with what oh yeah there was um, a lot of like implied like implied depth going on and then also actual depth so, so that I, idea of implied like things that are real and things that are you just see in your head sort of thing um, and then what else oh yeah I want to create this sort of comforting yet claustrophobic space with the kitchen so it's like this nice contained space, but also just feels a little uh, too close, uh, sort of thing. Oh yeah, and then uh, with the with the cutouts, I started uh, using replacement cutouts. So you can see she'll turn around right there. So three quarter profile, three quarter, uh, sort of thing. So I could have her dance uh, and spin around, sort of thing. So uh, fun to create that. And yeah, and that is it. So I'll just say that. that. <laughs> uh, okay, and then next one, baby square.
that is a promo for a website I created, babiescrib.com. And you can buy it's a USB drive uh, over here in the store. Um, so it was actually a project. I'd done a collaborative animation uh, with someone, and this was sort of an expansion of it. So I did a fake website with a bar that was in this animation. And I was just trying to experiment different ways of world building and creating narrative. So creating this uh, fake website, which please check it out, babiescrib.com, three S's. Um, uh, so they ha you can chat with them, and it's using a lot of the aesthetics of uh, webcam girls or a chat chatting sort of thing. So I used uh, that drone, like bad sound, like that hiss and drone, tried to use that in interesting ways. Um, and then this, just playing with simple aesthetics, kind of like a promo video, this bad scrolling font, but trying to use it in a more uh, artistic way. Uh, just playing with the frame, uh, and just manipulating the frame sort of thing, and then trying to create, uh, just with these materials, trying to create a sort of arc um, and cohesive sort of promo video. Um, yeah. And yeah, if you go to the website, uh, go to babyscrib.com forward slash talent. Uh, and then you can chat with the different uh, characters. You can actually web chat with them, that sort of thing, and click on the tip button to see different uh, animations. Uh, there's six characters and about ten videos for each character. Uh, so this is the last one, uh, last Team Burger one, a uh, very epic. Uh, here we go. Shit, 
Get in your hat, you motherfucker! Thank you. 
You didn't mention anything about dancing in the dream, and that there was a pretty big section of that. Um, so I was curious, did yeah. you, did you like? sort of have an idea, I want to animate this puppet to dance and then fit that in? Or was that something that, like, how did that develop? Do you remember? I, I don't remember, but it probably would have just been like, this would be really fun to animate this dance thing and then play with the cycle and just um, take my dream and make it a bit more fantastical and fun sort of thing, yeah. And then maybe it was just like another opportunity to go into one of those loops, you yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, okay, great. Thanks.